hey thanks for clicking in to watch this I'm just gonna quickly show you over the course of about 10 minutes how I create my twilight composite images for my real estate work I pre-process everything in Lightroom before I bring it into Photoshop uh, I do do tweaks in Photoshop afterward though um, just to make sure everything matches uh, what you're gonna see a lot in this video is me repositioning the images as I layer them in I was using a really flimsy tripod and uh, it created a lot of movement. I was also having to chimp on the back of the camera. Uh, my normal Sony system, I'm able to kind of use a cam ranger type thing with my phone, um, but the recent update on the apps broke it somehow. Uh, so this is my 5D with a 35 millimeter lens on a plastic tripod that keeps moving with every shot. So here I'm just going through choosing the image, bringing it into Photoshop, um, copy, new layer, paste, And then I go to like a 30 or 40% opacity to make sure the layers are aligned before I go ahead and uh, blend them in. I usually just use a simple lighten layer. I find that works perfectly well, um, at least with my capture method. I'm sure if you had a different way of, of capturing your images, I tend to go really dark and then that ensures that whatever it is I'm pointing the flash at is going to be pretty bright, or at least the brightest in the image relatively and then I can blend them in with the light and layer uh, layer mode option pretty well. I recently started messing with screen. Um, I don't use screen at all in this particular image, but um, a couple of my backyard ones recently I used screen on some stuff and it worked a lot better. So definitely more to explore there. I don't do the insides of homes enough, I think it actually adds a lot. If anybody's curious, I'm using a MacBook Pro. It's the late 2013 version. It's uh, just an SSD and like, 8 gigs of RAM or whatever. Uh, it just, it's been really, really good. Um, if you take a look at my layers on the bottom right there, you'll see that uh, the actual source layers, not the not the layer masks, but the actual layers themselves have a lot deleted. Um, that's what I'm doing right here on the screen now. I learned that uh, from Michael Kelly's AMA recently actually, and it has saved a lot in terms of system resources and uh, my saving file sizes. So thank you. Yep, there's that evidence of the shaky camera again. Okay, so yeah, the garage here. Do you want to align it? I thought the, uh, the brightness on the middle of the garage was a little bit too much, so um, you'll see here, I'll bring it in fully and then I'll go and I'll bring it back a little bit on the middle of the garage, just subtly, just enough so it's not glaring. Oh yeah, there, I switched the screen for a moment. Let's see how that looks. Okay, here we go, I darkened it a little bit. I could spend a lot more time on these images for sure. Uh, this is a pretty quick, just kind of drop the layers in, layer mask, do it really quick. Uh, I really increased the amount of time on these by using the shaky tripod instead of something more stable. Well, I'm using just a regular Yang Nuo, I think it's the 460 flash. Uh, it's a pretty basic, simple one that I got 
early on. I only have two of them. And I'm using uh, Fotex triggers. Oh, here we go, bringing in the lights. This is a really good example of where just a subtle, subtle camera movement puts different parts of the image into completely different spheres and arrays. Because um, I got the one on the right aligned, but the one on the left is not. So what I end up doing is creating two layers, uh, one layer for each light and align separately. So now I'm grabbing an ambient layer to fill in the grass because uh, it's a pretty black hole there in the front and then also uh, the roof which is incredibly dark. This was, uh, the sidewalk was a little bit blue. Okay, so for this next bit, I'm fixing a mistake that I should have caught when I was out in the field, but um, because I didn't catch it, I have to uh, go in and brighten this, this dark strip you see next to the door on the right. Um, when I photographed the side of the garage, I was able to light most of that surface, but I didn't catch that one strip right there, and it just so happens to line up exactly with the door, but um, I always take a safety camera or flash above the camera image which is useful for some stuff but uh, like that um, but only if you use it at like 50% opacity um, and then here I brought the uh, I brought an ambient image in to brighten the roof up because it was a sucking black hole yeah that should be pretty much it yep yep same yeah, that's the wide angle filter, which is really cool to use. It's really great for getting one points, but um, doing the skews and rotating is still probably faster. I'm just checking myself. There we go, saving, uh, back into Lightroom, little finishing touches in Lightroom, sky and adding a little bit more contrast and drama, changing the color, white balance a little bit. I go into Photoshop and I clean this up a little bit better and uh, deal with the dirt on the left there. Well, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this has some good information. Um,